It's very easy to be overwhelmed by China. A booming nation of 1.3 billion people whose increasingly prosperous lives are driving development on a scale the world has never seen. China is constantly on the move. It's estimated that in the next decade, 350 million people will leave the land for the city. It is the largest population movement in human history, and it's leading to the rise and rise of the megacity. The old gives way to the new. Entire cities emerge seemingly from nowhere. Well, it's absolutely phenomenal. And when you look at the scale of the cities, Chongqing, 31 and a half million people in Chongqing. It's, and most people have never heard of it. Melbourne architect Robert Caulfield is among the experts who've been invited in by the Chinese. They like his grand designs and have awarded him prized contracts to transform not just a few blocks, but entire cities. Just over in that area there will be the new hub from sketch to animation to construction. It all happens at dizzying speed. One of our projects they were actually putting in the roads before we'd even finished the drawings and uh, we, we just couldn't produce it fast enough. So as quick as you're drawing it, they're building it. Well, quicker than we were drawing it. <laughs> it's like China Inc. It's like a, a corporation with the five-year plan, everyone going in the one direction. I've had it suggested to me that doing business with the communists is good because they make a decision. <laughs> well, they do make decisions. It's that full-throttle philosophy that has transformed cities like Shanghai, no matter what the cost. This is a common sight on old buildings. These red painted characters, translated, mean to be demolished. It won't be long before this block becomes another skyscraper. In the middle of this soaring metropolis, we come across a grand old traditional Chinese house, marked for destruction. Ni hao. Ni hao. <laughs> Good to meet you. Mrs. Shu and her family have lived here for 70 years. And that protest banner in the window lets everyone around here know they don't want to move. So let me understand this. Let's have a look at your neighbours. One big high-rise there. Another big high-rise there. And your house right in the middle, but you don't want to move. No, they're asking us to leave, but we will never be willing to do so. Mrs. Scher's not alone in trying to hold her ground. Have a look at what happens when people like her refuse to budge. The developers just build around them, no matter how absurd the lengths or depths they have to go to. There's no time to dispute, no lodging a building complaint with council. Developers simply move too fast. And the new buildings appear as quickly as it takes to demolish the old ones. This 30-storey hotel went up in just two weeks. So basically prefabricated floor plates and prefabricated uh, walls that are all just moved in and put in place by a crane. It's like a big Lego set. The danger with that sort of development is that there is a risk of a lot of buildings being built that all look the same. However, this unfathomable ambition to rehouse hundreds of millions of citizens has created some truly bizarre anomalies. Have you ever wondered what it might be like if you were the last person on Earth? Well, I'd imagine that it would be something like this. And I've got to tell you, it is a very strange and eerie feeling. Everything is here, an entire city. All the buildings, the roads, schools, hospitals, you name it. Everything that is, except the people. And looking around, there is not a soul to be seen.
This is a new city called Linggang, an hour's drive from Shanghai, built for nearly a million people. It's almost like a cardboard cutout of a city, and in some places, a giant facade. Rows of vacant shops, restaurants and office buildings waiting for customers, diners and workers. When you walk around these ghost cities, what are your thoughts? <laughs> um, <laughs> what are my thoughts? Well, I mean, I, I just, I'm gobsmacked. I mean, I'm, I'm gobsmacked that there are so many malls and, and empty apartments just standing vacant, and yet they're still building more. It, it, it just it doesn't seem to make sense. Hong Kong-based financial analyst Gillam Tullock says neither he nor the world has ever seen anything like the phenomenon of China's ghost cities. They've constructed huge uh, residential areas with shopping malls, etc., and no one's moved in to live in them. Just because you build it doesn't mean they'll come. Clearly, they're not coming. No, I mean, 700 million people in China live on less than $2 a day. They simply can't afford these. And that's why these apartments are sitting empty, because there's no one who can afford to live in them. It's not just residential developments. Sprawling commercial districts also lie empty. This is Yu Jiaopu, new city, hyped to become China's Manhattan. In fact, challenging New York as the world's biggest financial district. But on our bitterly cold journey, we find it is utterly devoid of any sign of life. This is one of the more staggering sights I think I've seen. It's an entire city, quite literally, frozen in time. Now, only six months ago, construction on this massive project was in full swing. But now, it's all at a standstill. I can count at least 30 skyscrapers over there where the work has completely stopped. Officially, they say that this project is just on hold. But you've got to say, especially in these sub-zero temperatures, the future of this city looks especially bleak. This is the largest property bubble that uh, has ever been. Selfishly, from Australia's point of view, we like this bubble because we keep shipping iron ore and other raw materials to China so they can keep building these cities. Yeah, I wouldn't give up the day job, as they say. <laughs> and, I mean, I'd be very nervous because if the bubble does burst, then you simply have to follow um, the supply chain, and the supply chain ends up in, in Australia. But for the Australians helping to build the new China, all this construction makes perfect sense when you remember China's booming population, thriving middle class, and unwavering drive to become the world's dominant superpower. Well, it's absolutely phenomenal because there's somewhere between four and 500 million people still living in what the Chinese government considers to be inadequate uh, accommodation. So they're going hell for leather to build this accommodation. Four to 500 million people. I mean, it's hard to get your head around it. They're, they're staggering, you know. And, Architect uh, Robert Caulfield has been commissioned to redesign a vast area of the historic city of Nanjing. And the journey there is a reminder of why China's megacities work. They're connected by 10,000 kilometres of high-speed train lines. Have a look at the speed now. 303 kilometres an hour. And accelerating. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine one of these running between Sydney and Melbourne. I'll blink and you'd be there. Yeah, that's right. It's got a very long and rich history. Nanjing was once the ancient capital of China, home to the Ming Dynasty and a revered site. It's now entrusted to an Australian architect with some big ideas. We're proposing a cable car system that goes right along the front of the lake. Caulfield also has approved plans for a futuristic project in the city centre. Well, what we've got here, Michael, is that uh, just over in that area there will be the new hub 
building uh, and there's a high speed rail that goes actually through these buildings here and this goes for about five kilometres down this road and there'll be a number of high rise uh, factories in this area. I mean, it's one thing to sit in your Melbourne office and dream up this amazing renovation of a city, but to be standing here and seeing it underway... It is quite remarkable. It's, it, it happens so quickly. Yeah. And uh, there's 24 square kilometres in this master plan area that we've done. <laughs> that, that, that's enormous. That just seems to be the way things roll in the new China. Everything happens at a frantic pace. Robert Caulfield just hopes they let him get the drawings done first. So no idea is too big. It's really uh, quite strange, uh, Michael, because you know, I'll, I'll go back in a couple of days to uh, the Melbourne office where we're working on three or four retirement villages and then the next week we'll be working on a city. Yeah, yeah. It's, fair, it's a very exciting time though. And for all Australians, there's a fantastic opportunity here. Hello, I'm Liam Bartlett. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.